तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पेर हो अमारी ह नजर समी पेर हो अमारी ह इन श्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Supremo, our beloved Gunshash, the pathway geared to our liberation, the one who is always in our rescue, Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Every day, we sing the Arati. Once in the morning and once in the evening. And in the Mandirs, they perform the Arti five times in a day. It is considered to be the center point of prayer in the Swaminarayan Sampradaya. When they hear the bells, everyone comes and gathers in the Mandir hall and they face the idol of God and they sing. This hymn, this hymn regarding Bhagwan Swaminarayan's glory. But what is the history behind this? How did this hymn come about? Why is it sung every day? Nan Santos in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time have created thousands and thousands of kirtans, but none of them are sung every day on a basis like this particular hymn. Why is it significant? Why does it stand out? Why is it such a relevant point in a devotee's life whenever it's sung in the morning or in the evening? For that, we must go back and learn about its history. And the only key, you can say, element that plays a role in this arti that we sing every day is none other than Sadhguru Muktanand Swami. For the past couple of lectures, we've been taking a dive into his life, learning various kinds of qualities he possessed, the numerous charitras he performed due to that how he is as a sadhu. But one other feat, another great contribution that he made to this Swamran Sampradaya is by giving us the arti. It is sung every day, but we may know the meaning, but the history is very important. So without further ado, let's take a look at the prasang that made the arti or initiated the arti for the very first time. Swami Narayan Hare. After the passing of Ramanan Swami, Muktan Swami and a few sadhus arrived in Puj with the purpose to spread satsang. At the same time, sor sorrowful conditions existed due to Raman Swami's disappearance. And at that time, there was no Swami Narayan sect. It was called the Uddhav Sampradaya or Uddhav sect. Raman Swami established this sampradaya, this religion. And after his passing, everyone had followed him, looked at him as a role model, a guide of light to take them all to Bhagwan. He was their, you can say, spiritual head. But due to his passing, everyone was depressed. They didn't know what to do. They had no direction. All of the devotees were feeling regret for Swami's sudden departure. However, in the vast and ever-flourishing Holy Sampradaya, Raman Swami had taken place in everyone's heart as the Supreme Lord. At that time, 
all those various followers followers believed that Raman Swami is the Supreme Lord. That's how great of a character he was. So, as to relieve the satsangis of this, Sri Hari traveled through villages with sadhus and reached mangrove. Sri Hari desired to do something new in satsang. He started Samadhi Prakran, a chapter of leading people into trance to establish true upasana by, rele by revealing his immense power of godliness. Now, anytime Bhagwan himself even comes on this earth, he takes a human form, the Supreme Lord, and he behaves just according to the norms of society. If he shows too much overwhelming power, overwhelming glory, then the cycle of society would be broken. Due to that, Bhagwan stayed in his limit. But at that time, no one knew except Ramanan Swami and a few other santos that Sri Hari, meaning Sajanan Swami, meaning Bhagwan Swami, was the Supreme Lord himself, not Ramanan Swami. But to prove this, to show this, what did he do? He started to send people into trance, meaning he would snap his fingers and they would become unconscious. You're probably wondering what would happen? What would, where would they go? Would they, are they dead? No. They would experience enlightenment and they would experience a divine vision of the divine abode Akshardham the supreme abode of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And there, in the center of this Akshardham, they would see that divine form. When they saw the divine form, and then they came out of the trance, and they saw the same form right there in front of them that put him into trance, that form and this form became one to them. And that's how Upasna, meaning the true mode of worship, of who is supreme was established. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself started his sama Samadhi Prakran, meaning a chapter of performing Samadhi everywhere, to everyone. It quickly became a miracle, not only in Mangrove, but also the other villages. People could realize the greatness of Sri Hari through his trances. Children, youths, and even elderly people observed the divine abode of God and witnessed the supreme personality of Sri Hari, surrounded by numerous muktos, meaning liberated souls. After returning from such a trance state, they would reveal to the others what they saw. People knew the facts and took the shelter of Sri Hari and understood him to be supreme Lord of Lords. This led to a joyous, joyous peaceful, and divinized period in the satsang. Meaning now, devotees, followers started to, you can say, transform, or you can say, convert into the followers of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Ramanand Swami wanted this. Ramanand Swami had many, many messages, and he wanted this to occur. He wanted everyone to detach from him and attach to Sajanan Swami. But, that was no easy feat for those followers because Raman Swami was such a character in their eyes. Raman Swami was such a sadhu that it could not be completed like that just by merely Raman Swami saying and they doing. It had to be done by the Supreme Lord Himself. And the way He executed this was by establishing these Samadhi Prakrans. Continuing, when Muktan Swami foremost saint amongst the sadhus heard about this Samadhi Prakran, he initially felt it was wrong. Immediately, he went to where Sri Hari was staying. Muktan Swami, knowing it to be a hypocritical action, said, Maharaj, all these matters about Samadhi are hard to fathom. Samadhi is not possible without practicing the eight folds of yoga, which are extremely difficult to carry out in a perfect way even by the great yogis. Raman Swami never showed his power in this manner. Now, the mother of the Satsang Fellowship, 
himself went to Bhagwan Swami Narayan and said, you are doing the wrong thing by showing such kind of miracles. To attain samadhi, if we can put it into perspective, is no easy task. Yogis, meaning those who are rigorously, rigorously practicing Ashtang Yoga in the Himalayas all their life for hundreds and hundreds of years still cannot reach this platform of Samadhi. Ashtang Yoga cons consists of eight steps and the last step is Samadhi. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan in that time showing his supremacy no other avatar in the past out of the 24 avatars has ever revealed such kind of powers by snapping their fingers and putting their followers or non-followers into samadhi. Bhagwan himself, by walking sometimes, by listening to his heels and his, you can say, chakri, it's a wooden shoe, wooden shoes that Bhagwan wear, by having hearing them click like this, he would put them into samadhi. Such kind of miracles, by looking at someone, they would go into samadhi. Out of the 24 avatars, no other avatar has shown such kind of powers except Bhagwan Swaminarayan, proving one of the factors to be that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Saropari, supreme beyond all. So Muktan Swami did not like what Trihari was doing. He even said, Raman Swami never showed these kinds of powers, why are you doing it? Let's see what happens. With such kind of feeling in his heart, Muktanan Swami continued, Even though you all know the true value of satsang, how can you solely trust what you see in Samadhi Prakran to be the complete truth? He's asking devotees that how could you believe that this, you can say, so-called God is the Supreme God and by going into Samadhi, He is God Himself. How could you believe this? Just to put something into perspective for you, at that time, Muktanan Swami was such a staunch, you can say, follower of Ramanan Swami. He believed Raman Swami, Raman Swami to be the Supreme Lord Himself. But he was doing a Leela. Muktanan Swami came from Akshardham. He, uh, he is, he was, and he always w will be in an Anadi Mukt of Maharaj, of Bhagwan Swami Narayan the top most number one sadhu of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Anadi Mukt, liberated soul of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Yet, to show the people on this earth, to put it into perspective for them, he played a role. Just like how in high school we have drama class and there you have to play a robber. You play the role in a play and everyone stands in ovation. But let me ask you, afterwards, does your friends come and call you a robber or do they keep their most personal possessions away from you, believing that you're a robber, you might steal them? No. In the same way, Sadhguru Muktanan Swami here is playing a role. He's playing a role so he can teach us that Bhagwan Swami is Saropari. And by playing this role, Bhagwan, if Muktan Swami had not played this role of not knowing anything or anything, then number one, you'll see that this arti would not be created. Number two, you'll see that Bhagwan would not have put anyone in samadhi, and due to that, his supremacy would not be proven. The only, not the only factor that, I'm sorry, there is a fly here, not, not by proving that he that he can only put people into samadhi. That's the only factor that proves he is supreme, but that is one of the factors. So let's take a look. Within a while, Santdas Ji, a sadhu, came to Sri Hari. He looked at Sri Hari and lost consciousness. Though Sri Hari called him, Santdas Ji could not get up. Sri Hari smiled and said to Muktan Swami, Swami, see, I did nothing, but with the grace of Raman and Swami, everyone can see God's abode in Samadhi. Now Bhagwan is playing the reverse role, obviously. Now he is saying, look, I'm just sitting here. And this Sandasji comes and he looks at me. And he falls into Samadhi. 
Is it my fault? What did I do? I'm just sitting here. I didn't even snap my fingers or do anything. So he's playing a role back to Muktan and Swami. Muktan and Swami kept on staring at Sandasti. He knew that the endeavors which are required to achieve samadhi were never practiced by Sandasti. Meaning, he knew Sandasti did not perform Ashtang yoga, yet he went into samadhi automatically. But how did he reach such a high spiritual state without any practice? This is what was bothering Muktanand Swami. Sri Hari told Muktanand Swami to wake up Sandasti, but he could not do so. When Sri Hari uttered his name, Santashi immediately got up and explained what he observed in Samadhi. Sri Hari was seated on the throne in Akshardham and countless muktos including Raman and Swami were worshipping to Sri Hari. Then I went to Raman and Swami and bowed down to him and Raman and Swami told me that Sajan Swami is the Supreme Lord of Lords. Santashi explained his whole, whole experience to Muktanand Swami and what he saw. Muktanand Swami was lost in deep thought. In the evening, Muktanand Swami walked towards the jungle, barefooted with tears in his eyes. He suddenly stopped at one of the trees. At once he heard a familiar voice, O Muktanand, O Muktanand. Hearing such loving words in such a solitary place, Muktanand Swami was startled. As he looked back, he saw his guru, Ramanan Swami, who was dressed in white garments. The luster of his presence filled the jungle with light. His hands were long enough to reach his knees. Meaning, that's characteristic of Bhagwan. It's called Ajahn Bao. Our Dada Guru also possessed this physical characteristic. His face was beautiful with a divine touch. Muktan Swami's joy had no bounds. He, he prostrated upon having Guru Raman Swami's darshan, meaning Raman Swami was depressed, so he went off in the jungle. There he saw Raman Swami in divine light. Then Raman Swami said pleasantly, My son, I know very well you know me as God, but in reality, your disturbance is due to what people are seeing in Samadhi. Muktan Swami was filling his heart with the immortal words of Raman and Swami. Did you forget that I've repeatedly had said that I am only a drum beater, but the real hero is Sajan and Swami? Meaning, in that time, Raman and Swami was constantly saying and saying to not only Muktan and Swami, but his followers that I am merely a drum beater, but the real hero is Sajan and Swami. Meaning, I'm just here to set up Sajan and Swami meaning Bhagwan Swaminarayan's arrival. I was assigned by Sajan Swami from Akshardham to come here and establish the Uddho Sampradaya and gather followers. My role is done now. That's what Raman and Swami is saying. But the real person I was setting everything up was setting everything up for was Sajan and Swami. This is what Raman and Swami has explained to Muktan and Swami. For him, nothing is impossible. He is the cause of all causes, the God of all gods, and is supreme. As the sun gives light to the world, it is not a matter of astonishment. Likewise, Sajan Swami is giving the knowledge of God. Therefore, there is nothing to be surprised about. He can do anything because he is God. As the ocean contains the water of each river, Likewise, Sajan Swami possesses the power to emerge in all incarnations and has the ability to submerge them back inside of His divine form, proving that He is supreme. In addition, rose, roses are such flowers with sweet fragrances to everyone, regardless of the person's caste or status. When a person smells a rose, it smells very nice, whether... You are the highest caste or the lowest caste. It does not distinguish between anyone. Similarly, whoever sees Sajan and Swami achieve Samadhi, there is no difference of caste in the realm of His grace. These words were enough to vanquish Muktan Swami's doubt. Muktan Swami understood that Sajan Swami is the Supreme Lord Himself. 
he was extremely happy. Subsequently, Raman Swami vanished. Meaning, Raman Swami himself came in a divine form. Meaning, Bhagwan himself came in the form of Raman Swami, we can say, and gave his true intention of who he really is and clarified that Raman Swami is just a servant of Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself. There was a tremendous... So the problem, meaning Muktan Swami was agitated, was frustrated because he could not stand how Sri, Sri Hari was putting everyone into samadhi without any kind of efforts from the opposite person and also regarding where Sri Hari was doing these such kind of miracles when Rama and Swami never performed anything like this. So he was agitated. He's like, why are you showing all these to people? Why are you doing this? He did not know the reason, the intention, but Rama and Swami clarified everything for him. So now here's where the pinnacle of our story comes into play. There was a tremendous joy on the face of Muktanand Swami. He went straight to his residence. He called all the saints and devotees and asked them to be present at the home of Naranbhai and w with various articles for worshipping, such as garlands, flowers, sandal sandalwood paste, and kumkum. Muktanand Swami approached Sri Sriji Maharaj, meaning Sri Hari, with rich clothes and ornaments. Sri Hari said, Swami, we are saints. We cannot possess such object, objects. Muktan Swami said, You are the Lord of Lords. Then after seeing Swami's kind appeal, Sri Hari was dressed in lavish clothes and adorned with high precious jewelry. He occupied a decorated cot which Raman Swami used to sit on. Muktan Swami worshipped him with sandaled wood paste, kumkum, flowers, and devotees worshipped Sri Hari as well. It was the evening in Galvani village where those were those moments that people bestowed the crowd in the history of Swami and Sampraday. Meaning in that time in the village of Galvani everyone gathered and there Muktan Swami brought the nicest clothing, jewelry and adorned Bhagwan with it and then performed his pujan with chandan and kumkum. There was a crowd of devotees that had gathered. Muktan Swami raised a claim and said that this Sajan Swami is the Supreme Lord and whoever would have his darshan will have their sins destroyed and will attain Akshradham. In that time, right after Raman and Swami, all the other followers of the Uddhav Sampraday of Raman and Swamis looked at Muktan and Swami to be senior. When Muktan Swami addressed this point and told them, everyone believed them. Without Samadhi, believed them, and with Samadhi, obviously believed them. Proving that in Muktan Swami's mind, it finally clicked that Raman Swami is not the Supreme Lord, but Bhagwan Swami Narayan came from his Akshradham and did these various charitras proving his supremacy and establishing his supremacy here on this earth. Muktan Swami lit the arti so all other followed behind. Today, for the first time in the village of Kal Kalvani, the whole assembly cons consisting of saints, males and female devotees performed the arti of Supreme Lord Swami Narayan. Jaya Sada Guru Swami, Prabhu Jaya Sada Guru Swami, Sahaja Ananda Dayadu, Badavanta Bahunami, Prabhu Jaya Sada Guru Swami. We sing it every day. And this is the history behind the Arti. That that's how it came about. It's none other it's none other than the glory of Sri Hari and how great he is. And in the end, the last, you can say, stanza, it says, Mukta Nanda Kahe Mukti, meaning Mukta Sami is the author. In that time, all this was written and it was saved. And every day, as a ritual, a tradition, in the morning and evening time mainly, 
everyone sings and remembers the glory of Bhagwan Swami and we all and we can thank Sadguru Muktan Swami for giving us this arti and not only that but for playing such a role for being such a role player that due to his acting we have received this arti we can remember Bhagwan and we can sing his glory day in and day out so whenever you sing the arati, remember this prasang of Muktanan Swami and Sajanan Swami and Ramanan Swami and how it was proven in this prasang. This one small charitra that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the Supreme Lord of Lords. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. Varnive Sharmani Yadarsanam Mandaha Saruchirananam Bhujam Poojitam Suranaro Tamair Muda Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Sri Ganesham Maharajani Jai Almighty Supreme Lord of our beloved Ganesha Maharaj, Pathmi Kachu Liberation, Pujapad Guruji, all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Bhagwan Swami Narayan was sitting on a large decorated court in the Darbar of Surakhachar in Loya. Now, at that time, in the month of December, Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself covered with the white blanket, and in front of him, Many, many santos and devotees, they were seated in the sabha. And Sivanand Swami and Bhagavadanand Swami, both santo, ask a question to Maharaj. Santo asked the question regarding the characteristic of a person who has complete faith in the form of Bhagavan as well as in the form of sant coupled with their glorious greatness. And in reply, Bhagwan Swaminarayan said, What would a person who has faith in God and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glory not do for the sake of God and his son? For them, he would renounce his family, renounce any fear of public ridicule, Renounce kingdom, renounce pleasures, renounce wealth, renounce his wife, and in the case of a woman, she will renounce her husband. This is what the brief explanation for the characteristic of a person who has faith in the form of Bhagwan and Sant. So he can always 
renounce everything for the sake of attaining Bhagwan and Sant's ra- pleasure or Rajibo. And after describing this brief explanation regarding the faith in the form of Bhagwan and Sant, Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself, Bhagwan himself narrated the stories of his own deity. Most of the scriptures describe the glory and incident of the life of Bhagwan which was described by the devotee but here in this case Bhagwan himself describes the glory or the story or we can say the life episodes of his own devotees his own disciples that is the greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan then Bhagwan Swami Narayan narrated the stories of the devotees one by one. First he narrated Raj, Rajput Galuji of the village Dadusar, then Kusar Kurbai of Dharampur, then Parvatbai, Rajbai and now today Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself is going to narrate the stories from the life of Jeevubai and Ladubai. Jeevubai and Ladubai, these both devotees, they were female devotees of the Gadda. And in the entire Sampradaya, most of the devotees very much informed about these two devotees' life because they were dedicated totally, not only their, not only their wealth, property, but even their mind also they have dedicated towards Bhagavan Swami Narayan. And that is why Maharaj also stayed most of his time when he was in the human form on this earth at the time Bhagwan also stayed there in Garuda for these two devotees devotion towards him also the other khachars but these two female devotees they have very much devotion for Bhagwan Swami Narayan and Laduba and Jeevubai, these both were the sister of Dada Khachar and daughters of Ebal Khachar, Dada Khachar's father. Now, they both were the divine souls and they directly descend from Aksardam. So definitely from, from the beginning, as Maharaj took birth on this earth as a human form, as a Ganesham Maharaj. He performed many, many incidents in Chapaya and in Ayodhya. After that, even Bhagwan renounced his family, his home, and traveled through the jungles and in the Himalayas and in many other places. And finally Bhagwan reached there in the Lajpur and he stayed forever there under the command of Muktanan Swami and up finally in the commands of Ramanan Swami. And after that Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself accepted the Gadi, meaning the he had accepted the kingship or lordship for of this Sampraday. And even after becoming or after worshipping by the thousands of devotees as a Bhagwan, then Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself travelled one place to another for the for giving darshan and accepting devotion of the thousands of devotees. At the time when Bhagwan Swami Narayan came to Garuda, till this time, even without any single contact or without any performing any particular religious practice, this both Jeevubai and Ladubai they both can have the vision, such a divine vision that they both have a darshan of Bhagwan. Even while Bhagwan was traveling through the Himalayas or jungles, everywhere they witness all those incidents while staying in Gadda. And as they both descend from the Aksardam, meaning they both came from the Aksardam for the liberation of the countless millions of souls in this earth. So they they have naturally devotion for Bhagwan. Even while they both were 
as a child we can see uh, we even our day to day life we also witness the other children they mostly play with the other children and they were mostly busy and nowadays they mostly busy with their tablets or iphone or any other smartphones but as ladu bhai and jeev bhai they both were the uh, muktos from aksardham so they from their childhood they play with the bhagwan meaning the worse bhagwan from their early age and after that uh, after attaining bhagwan swami narayan and after attaining that attaining the divine knowledge that bhagwan swami narayan is the supreme lord and after having bhagwan's darshan as his manifest form in gadada they totally decided not to engage for anything in the worldly way meaning not in their family relation not for anything else but only worship bhagwan swami narayan that's it but as we know whenever one desire to worship bhagwan and whenever one desire to renounce the family life or whenever one desire to become a sant at the time most of the people or the family relatives they mostly they do not ready to let the other person become a son or renounce his family but those who had decided once to dedicate their life only for worshiping bhagwan such kind of mamuksu such kind of devotees they finally attain whatever the desire meaning they finally they attain the full time devotion of bhagwan and in the case of jiuba and ladubai as they have decided not to engage themselves in worldly life and perform the devotion for bhagwan swami narayan throughout their life so they have the hindrance from their father able khachar once upon a time they both were worshiping bhagwan swami narayan in small form which we call is lalji maharaj or thakur ji maharaj they have the small idol of bhagwan and they both worship bhagwan swami narayan in the form of that bard lalji we can say thakur ji maharaj at the time that was a uh, evening time meaning they both were doing aartis and stutis they were busy in doing this bhajan and kirtan and just uh, the other things but at the time evil khachur he came into his house and he saw that my both daughters now they were young enough to marry and even while engaging in worldly way or in the other rela- relation the the whole day they were worshiping bhagwan now this is enough this is same for me because i am the king of this village and if my daughters remain in my home only to do bhajan that's not proper what would people the others what would they say in this way thinking in this way abel khachar came into his house and when he saw that both of his daughters they were worshiping bhagwan then he became angry and in the anger he said please stop this devotion this is not a mandir this is my house if you want to stay in this house if you want to remain in in this house then you have to follow my commands you have to stop this worshiping bhagwan the whole day then jiuba and ladubai they both requested to their father please we are doing bhajan we are not disturbing anyone else and even we do not want anything from any other if we do not disturb others then why you disturb us then the able catcher say 
you are doing the bhajan or you are doing the devotion you are performing devotion for this small idol is he really a god are you believing that this is the god then give me any such kind of evidence that i can believe that this is god himself and your devotion is true otherwise i would not let you do this bhajan and kirtan and uh, engaging in worshiping all the day then jiva and larva they both pray to small idol of bhagwan please bhagwan give any such kind of in, uh, evidence to my father we as your devotees we do not want anything from you but only for the sake of our father please give one evidence that you are the bhagwan and our devotion is true while praying in this way to bhagwan jiva and ladu bai the both offer a bowl of milk to bhagwan a small idol of thakur ji maharaj then abul khachur was watching while standing near the door little far from the idol of bhagwan and as jiva and ladu bai pray to thakur ji maharaj please bhagwan give some in, uh, evidence to my father so that he can believe you are god himself and with the request of devotee bhagwan always fulfill their wishes and that's why here in front of apple khachur small idol took a bowl of milk in his hands and drink the whole bowl of milk and throw the ball near the apple catcher then apple catcher bowed down to bhagwan he fell down in for the boat bowing down to bhagwan and even not only that but he believed from the day that my both of daughters they were not an ordinary persons but they were the muktos from bhagwan's dam and finally he even asked for forgiveness from both of his daughter and he said now this is your home what you would like to do you may worship throughout the day bhagwan i do not stop you again and this is your house you continue your worshiping your devotion is true your bhagwan is true and from that day even abel khachar also believed in god there were many incident even after becoming this evil khachur's family as a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan many many incidents happen now as bhagwan swami narayan narrated the stories of these two female devotees in this vachanamrut so many such incidents happen in their life both were uh, as they were young enough to marry and according to their at the, uh, according to their times tradition in india abul culture decided marriage of jiwbai and ladubai but even after getting marriage both were decided to worship him bhagwan swami and that's why they both deny to go there to their house meaning their husband's house and finally their father abul khachar also accepted their request and they both staying while staying in garuda worshiping bhagwan swami throughout their life as after bhagwan swami accepted garuda as his own home his own house and bhagwan stay there for more time in his life even after c- completing traveling to the other villages and cities bhagwan swami narayan came back to garuda he had accepted garuda as his residential home or his hometown and as bhagwan stayed there in garuda so definitely 
many many santos hundreds of santos also stay there in garuda and many times even thousands of devotees also came for darshan of maharaj and even at the time there were no any transportation facilities so the devotee came from very far the other places so they definitely stay there for many days in garuda and for all those devotees and santo dada khachar's family meaning able khachar's family they provide all the shelters food and everything sometimes juba and ladu by the pot cook for thousands or hundreds of devotees even they have too much affection and devotion not only for the form of bhagwan but also for the santo once jeev bai ladu bai and raj bai these three female devotees they were traveling from one place to another from karyani to garuda when they came back to garuda at the time they were in a specially covered bullock cart and while they were passing through the road at the time they listened something someone like screaming and something like voice from with the pain swami narayan swami narayan so as they listen this voice of bhagwan uh, someone speaking bhagwan swami narayan's name with the pain so they gaze that someone may be in trouble so they stop the bullock cart and they send the driver who was chanting bhagwan swami narayan's name and maybe in his voice we can calculate his pain so go there and go there and uh, give us the message what was the situation so the bullock uh, bullock cart driver he went there and he so akhandanand swami he was laying on the land and without food his body become very weak and even more than that he had he, he was suffering from diarrhea so he become very weak so now these three sisters these three female devotees of bhagwan swami and they have decided even though there there was a tradition at that time do not uh females always they have to cover themselves their faces and not to show their faces to the other male and that is why they have selected this bullock cart meaning the cover bullock cart at the time that was not for the all the people and still they decided to set swami inside the bullock cart and they themselves walked throughout the way when the rich gadda and maharaj knew about this incident then maharaj became very pleased upon these three devotees so this was as in the third vachanamrita of loya bhagwan swami and described the incident from the life of these devotees why because they have the such kind of faith in the form of bhagwan and sant coupled with their knowledge of their glory so by this incident we can say they have the faith in the form of bhagwan and sant so that they have renounced their luxury and give the or provide such facility to sant and they themselves suffer meaning the walk from from the distance to reach gadda many other incident once upon a time they have too much affection for bhagwan swami narayan even they have that much affection that they cannot remain without bhagwan swami narayan while uh, without doing darshan so once upon a time bhagwan swami and decided to go for vartal for the celebration of uh, hari jayanti samayav 
but Bhagwan had decided not to take any female devotees to Gadda, uh, Vartal from Gadda. So Bhagwan did not announce in the Sabha that we will go to Vartal the next day and only Santo and male devotees join with him. He did not announce anything else. And without announcing, Bhagwan only pass the message to some santo and devotees that now we will proceed towards Vartal the next morning. But as these both devotees, they have such kind of affection for Bhagwan, so they have got some symptoms that Bhagwan definitely will depart tomorrow morning. But without perfect message or without any announcement, how one can believe that Bhagwan definitely will depart from tomorrow. But these devotees, they have such kind of devotion, so they in their mind believe that now Bhagwan will definitely leave Gadda the next day. But as they have too much affection for Bhagwan, they did not remain without Bhagwan for a single day. That's why, as they knew about the departure of Bhagwan, so they sat in meditation and they knew about Bhagwan's traveling. Because whenever Bhagwan traveling in different different villages, or whenever Bhagwan Swaminar and went one place to another, at that time Bhagwan always travel with his man ki godi. So these female devotees they sat for the meditation and they tied their vrutis to the man ki godi so that Bhagwan cannot go outside from the village of Gadda. And the next morning Bhagwan as the devotee he had prepared the man ki godi for the Maharaj and Maharaj sat on the manki but as those female devotees they have by their vruti by their mind focusing on the manki godi's feet they have tied their tied manki godi's feet in Garuda so that manki godi could not even walk even Maharaj he manki with the string still Manki Godi remained there. He could not walk for a single step. Then Maharaj knew about this incident, but he Bhagwan wants to show us that my female devotees they have such kind of affection for me. And finally Maharaj dismount from the Manki Godi and Maharaj said this is all because of female devotees and Maharaj asked the permission, please grant us the permission, we will definitely after completing the Samaya, after completing the celebration, we will definitely come back here in Garuda. Every time devotees ask permission from Bhagwan, and here in the case of this female devotee's affection, Bhagwan himself asked the permission from those devotees. This is all because they have the unflinching faith in the form of Bhagwan. And because of that faith, they have attained such kind of devotion for Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And Pramanan Swami described this incident in the Kirtan. Manakiye chadyare mohana vana maadi. In this Kirtan, Pramanan Swami described the whole incident that how Bhagwan Swami desired to go from go from Garuda and the female devotees they have they decided not to not to uh, they decided to stop Bhagwan there because they have darshan of Bhagwan. And finally after getting permission from the female devotees Bhagwan proceeds towards Vartal but after completing Samaya after completing the 
whole festival of hari jayanti bhagwan directly came back to garuda this this was the devotion of jiva and larubai for bhagwan swami narayan and that is why in the vachanamrut bhagwan swami narayan says after considering the devotion of these devotees of garuda and after watching their desireless devotion i only stay here in garuda believing this is my home this is the words of bhagwan swami narayan and this is only because of the devotion of these two sisters jiubai and larubai so this is what their faith in the form of bhagwan and sant so by this listening and reading such stories from the life of devotees we can also cultivate our own faith our own nischay or nishta in the form of bhagwan and sant so that we can also attain such kind of devotion for bhagwan shri ganeshyam maharajani jay shri patim shri dharam sarvadeveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे 